Yes. All right. We are going to be analyzing um, Clorox, or sorry, the amount of bleach that's in different Clorox samples. We want to know if there's a statistical difference between the sodium hypochlorite that's contained in a generic brand versus a Clorox brand. And our generic brand happens to be um, Great Value Walmart. Right? To do that, we are going to have to standardize our sodium thiosulfate solution. This is, by the way, a redox titration. And so the math for that can get a little complicated and we're gonna go through the math after we go through one of our titrations for standardization. So in here, we have some Ki. To this, we're going to add a known amount of potassium iodate. Potassium iodate has been dried, weighed, dried, weighed until we have 0.3 milligrams between those weighings. And so I feel your pain when it's doing that because it's a little bit painful, time consuming. But we have our standard potassium iodate solution. Then we have um, our sodium thiosulfate solution that we made. Now, we have to use our potassium iodate as a primary standard and not the sodium thiosulfate, and I need you to tell me why in your report, why it has to be that way. And so we're using potassium iodate as our primary standard, and then uh, the thiosulfate will be our secondary standard. All right. So to this, we need to add 25 milliliters of our iodate solution. I will put the quantities that we used in Canvas so you'll know how that was made for your calculations. I don't have a waste maker. Thank you. Good thing that's not a toxic chemical. All right, 25 milliliters of our iodate solution to two grams of Ki. And to that, we're gonna be adding 10 mils of 10% sulfuric acid. There we go. These chemical reactions get a little complicated. The stoichiometry can get a little complicated. We're going to go through a sample on our glass board, since they took out our marker board in here, to kind of go through that. I will not use exact numbers. It's just going to be a sample for you. You'll need to put in your exact numbers. All right, so here we have our Ki mixed with our iodate. Add 10 milliliters, about 10 milliliters, and our procedure says about 10 milliliters. So you notice I'm not using a volumetric pipette for that because it's about, and we should get this dark brown color. And I will show you why it's dark brown when we go through our calculations. 
going to set this up for titration. Starting we need to read our volume. Our initial volume is 0 0.61. 0.61. So let's write that down. Example one, initial, final, six one. All right. stopping periodically to give the reaction time to catch up with what I'm putting in there so so the gist of this is we need to titrate this with our thiosulfate until we get a straw color once we have the straw color we're going to add our starch indicator which will then make it blue sometimes really dark blue so you can't add your indicator too soon because indicator in this will just look black and it will make solid iodine and it's really hard to get back in solution so you have to almost complete your reaction before you add your indicator. We're getting a little lighter. So since we're getting lighter and you can almost see some yellow in there, which is going to be indicative of our straw color, notice I'm slowing down the amounts that I add so that I don't go over. You can almost see the straw color show up where it drips in. That means I'm getting close. Still a little bit orange. My orange is going away. I've got a drop there that I need to pull in. much lighter huh let's see that's pretty much so a straw color it's a yellow but it's got a slight orange cast that's a straw color maybe another drop or two let's see what happens yeah all right let's add our indicator is starch. Starch with I2 makes a complex, or well with I3 really, but did you see that when it dripped in? That's what it should look like to give you a dark, dark color. 
Now we're going to titrate this to clear. I may have had it a little bit too dark still because my color of my iodine mixed with the starch is a little too dark. So my straw color should have been a little lighter. See how it start trying to go clear? You can definitely tell it's a bluish purple now. Now it's looking like a purple. And now it's clear. And I probably just went over. We're going to read this. This is 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28.2. I'm sorry, 24.2. I don't know where I got 28. 24.5.6.7. 24.82. 24.82. 24.82. 24.82. So that final minus initial will give me the volume of thiosulfate that we used. Now let's go for the math. Our lovely whiteboard. Okay, so this is what we just did. We have our iodate primary standard. We mixed it in with our Ki. Ki is the source of I minus. Plus, we have an excess of the acid when we added that sulfuric acid, 10% solution. And this is going to yield three moles of I2 plus three moles of water, okay? So this is what was in our flask, and to this flask, what we put in was our thiosulfate, which goes to this is our oxidation reaction. With every oxidation, you have a reduction reaction. So the reduction reaction for this, as we drip in our thiosulfate, is this. Net cell reaction is going to be I2 plus 2 thiosulfate yields this. Okay. Now, we know the concentration of our iodate moles per liter. Okay. This you're going to have to calculate. You're going to calculate this by using the mass of iodate that we used. And then you're going to take that and you're going to divide it by the molar mass of iodate, which is 214.00. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. That's going to give you the moles that we used because these, this gram right here is going to cancel. This you'll be given. That's going to give you the moles. You're going to divide the moles by the liters. We made 250 milliliters of that solution, so 0.25 liters, and that gives you molarity of the iodate, which goes right here. All right. Then we have our stoichiometry. We have one mole of iodate from here, which produces three moles of I2 here. Then we have one mole of I2. Now see this three moles of I2 here. Then down here, we use the one mole of I2 with two moles of thiosulfate. 
that gives us the moles of the thiosulfate. This is this is equal to moles of thiosulfate that we use. You will then divide that by your titration volume in liters, and that will give you the molarity of your thiosulfate. Okay. The molarity of your thiosulfate will have to be known because this is what you're standardizing to do your Clorox titrations. And we'll get to the math for the Clorox titrations once we start those samples. Now, I've shown you one example of our standardization of the thiosulfate. We're going to do the other three off camera to save time, battery, etc., etc., and then we'll start back up with our Clorox samples. Okay, so see you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back. We're here with our bleach samples. We have our generic and we have our brand name, which is Clorox. Um, you can see over here in our stock solutions that the brand name is not actually clear where the generic is. You may want to hypothesize as to why that is. Okay. So we have 25 milliliters of our stock solution titrated in each of these. We're getting ready to add our 50 milliliters of our acidified KI solution. And then we're going to titrate just like we did. This should look very similar to our standardization. This does not have to be quantitative. We have our thiosulfate red at 0, 0.00. You will notice we are mixing these titration samples up fresh. There is a reason for that. When you're doing redox reactions, you don't want those reactions to sit around because there could be an alternate reduction oxidation reaction occurring with just stuff in the atmosphere sometimes. And you don't want, you want to minimize that error. indicator a little too soon but we're going to try it There we go. We are at fifteen point four nine. Yep, and we started at zero. All right. We're gonna titrate the rest of these and then I will have the data in canvas for you to work up to do all of your calculations but we're going to come back to the last titration so you can actually see how we're going to do a titration after we have a known quantity of our titrant that we're supposed to add so I'll see you in a few minutes welcome back 
we have our last sample of the brand name and so we're going to this is our 25 milliliter of our stock solution to that we're adding our 50 milliliters of the acidified ki this one you can see looks a little different because it's the brand name so it's a little muddy almost if you want to call it that all right now we've done at least three of these we know the volume that it takes for this amount of hypochlorite or bleach to be titrated so we're just going to go ahead and drop down to about the volume about the volume we need we're going to stop just shy of this particular titration though is pretty easy to tell unless you're doing the brand name because apparently it does some a little bit weird stuff. We're at 13. Let's get a little bit lighter. Yeah, let's put our indicator in there. For some reason, this leaves a little cast of an orange. So we're stopping a little bit before. And with this one, you need to go dropwise. Because for some reason, turns really quickly once you add the indicator. Oh, so close. Hmm. I added a full drop instead of a half. But see how this one remains slightly yellowed? Um, you can tell our blue is gone, but it remains slightly yellowed. So this end point is a little bit more difficult to determine. Okay. Give us a few minutes and then we'll be, we'll be back at our board to go through some of the calculations. All right, welcome back for calculations. We have, you, you have set up before the calculations for the concentration of your thiosulfate. So you're going to have the average molarity of your thiosulfate to use for the calculations of your bleach solutions. All right. So whatever your calculation is for your molarity, remember this is equal to molarity of your thiosulfate. That number is going to go here the molarity of your thiosulfate is going to go there. All right, now let's look at what happens. Where do I have my, my hypochlorite? Let's look at what happens in these reactions. I'm going to get this just, just a second. All right, back to our reactions. We've got our, oops. Sorry. Sodium. Not a three. Oh. That's right. Sorry. Hypochlorite is that. Sorry. All right. So that breaks down when it's in solution because it's a sodium salt. Then what you've got is you've got your chlorate, hypochlorate, yeah, reacting with the acid that we added and the I minus that we added to give you I2 plus chloride ion plus water. Okay. Now remember, this then goes back into our overall net equation with sulfate to give us this. Okay. Um, now you can look up 
how starch indicates the amount of iodine because what you're actually monitoring is this but this is an equilibrium with this and as this is used up this will go to form that so our so so our sulfate um, thiosulfate will react with it to give us I minus at the end of the titration you should all have I minus in there all right okay so back to here we have the concentration of our thiosulfate With to that, or I'm sorry, mm, let me move this down. With this, you're going to multiply this by the volume of your titration in liters, and that's going to leave you with moles of thiosulfate. Let's leave that calculation there. I put it all in one big, long scientific line, but you can break it up. So here, this value, we've got moles of thiosulfate, all right? For two moles of thiosulfate, once again, we have to go back here. Two moles of thiosulfate reacts with one mole of I2. Then we have one mole of I2 from one mole of hypochlorite, right, from here. One mole of this comes from one mole of that, so that's where that stoichiometry comes from, okay? That's going to leave us with, once we cancel, moles of bleach. We want concentration. Our original problem asked for concentration. So we divide this by the aliquot that we took for each sample, which was 25 milliliters. So moles per liter is going to give us concentration. Now let's take a step back. That 25 milliliters that you added was from a stock solution that was a 1 to 10 dilution. So you have to take this and multiply it by 10 for your final answer. Because this is what's going to come out of the bottle. Okay. This is what you added from your stock solution. This is what comes out of the bottle. And you want to answer what comes out of the bottle. All right. So remember, um, with this one now, you have done the same, you've used the same method to analyze the concentration of bleach in two different types. So we've got a generic and a brand name. So now you can use the t-test to determine whether or not there's a difference in between those two sample means for your concentrations. Does that sound good? If you have any questions, let me know. I'll post what you need on Canvas, or I will embed it in the YouTube video. I'll probably do both, so you, you won't have to watch through the YouTube video if you want to go back to the data that's uh, been collected. All right? Um, you can let me know if you have any questions. Email me. I'll be here. Um, stay safe, and I'll see you later.